Hey, awesome people of YouTube, welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 build guide. This one is going to be about the open, uh, open hand monk. It is really good, really powerful. There's a lot of damage, right? There's a few different ways to uh, build it. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you everybody who's been watching. And if you can uh, enjoy this type of videos, do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you don't like this video, do dislike him, but let me know why. Right? So I can improve, maybe change stuff, stuff. So I can uh, get my content be better. And I have my own Discord. Link is down in the description. And tomorrow, on Wednesday, I will be doing a live stream honor mode. There will be some cool things we'll be able to do where you could uh, change the gameplay. You know, But all of that will be on stream tomorrow. So let's get into the video. Right? So there is multiple ways to play uh, the monk, right? The open hand monk you can go with nine uh, monk three thief right you can go with six monk four thief and uh two uh fighter you can go eight monk and four thief right um i'm gonna show just nine monk and three thief right but again that's up to you how you want to build them right when you first start you want to just put six levels into monk, right? And then once you hit level seven, you'll be respecting into and putting your first level into rogue and then everything into monk, right? But I'm going to show you how you would build once you reach level seven. Remember, once you reach level six or level seven, sorry, you'll be respecting. But I'll show you actually how to do this with a monk first and then respecting. So when you go monk, we're going to go uh into way of just using elixirs the elixirs of hill giant strength and eventually cloud giant strength right that way you don't have to worry about strength and you will always do a lot of damage because this is a tavern brawler build right so we'll do something like this right um the exterior will be our main damage until we reach level four constitution just so we're tanky especially in tactician honor mode this will be a bit hard mind you i will be doing this build in honor mode Tomorrow should be able to see and possibly make fun of me because I'll fail. Right? Wisdom, because of uh, one of the buffs that makes wisdom be our uh, armor, right? If we don't have any like actual armor, if it's cloth clothing. Right? Do something like that. For your proficiencies, it is up to you. You know? Background, it depends on how you want to play your character, you know? Uh, race, Githyanki is good right uh, uh wood elves wood half elves are pretty good just because of the extra movement speed right uh drow is not bad those races but it's personally up to you you know then you pick a race or not race sorry you pick a name done right? level two mind you uh if you can see so your martial arts your dex is going to be a uh, damage until level four right ignore the strength and all that that's because of my current gear right oh there you go unarmored defense you know your reflexes are as effective as any armor while not wearing armor you add your wisdom modifier to armor class right later you will be utilizing armor if you want to right but in an early game clothing will be your best friend because there's not great armor, so you'll be able to have decent, um, what should we call it? Armor. Um, I didn't mean to press that. So, that's level one and level two. Oh, well, sorry, level one. Right. Now, level two is simple, right? You pick the, you don't really pick anything. You get your uh, disengage, dash, and patient defense, right? Pretty cool. Especially an unarmored movement. Right? In the early game, if you pick Wood Elf or Wood Half Elf, you have one and a half extra meters of movement. And with this, it's an extra three if you're not using armor or shield. So you have four and a half extra meters of movement speed. Pretty nice. Allows you to close distance and get rid of the enemies faster. Level three, we'll get an extra key points, we'll get our subclass, and we'll get deflect missiles, which is pretty cool. Allows you to do a little extra damage, but it does cost uh, a key point to deflect it. We're not gonna go way of four elements or way of the shadow. You are going way of open hand. And you get wonderful flurry of blows, topple, stagger, and push. 
Stagger just allows you to make them uh, not be able to use uh, opportunity attack for the one turn. Topple is pretty good because it makes them prone and you get an advantage. Push is really amazing early game because there's a lot of ledges and a lot of ways to either push the enemies off the ledges or just send them into a chasm permanently eliminate them, but you do lose loot. So be mindful of that, but it is pretty fun. Yeah. Then you get, uh, if you get Yankee, you get psionic jumps. Yeah. That's level three. Uh, level four, that's where a lot of stuff changes. You get so you have specialization and slow fall. So you get resistance to fall damage, which is pretty good. Right? And you get extra key points. For your first feat, you gotta go with the beautiful, most broken tavern brawler. Right? Because, and here, you, if you want this, you can get the 17th constitution just to get yourself a little more. Right? Um, you can go 15 constitution to get the, the 16th and then put two points into intel so you have a little bit more of saving throws. Mind you, your damage, a lot of it that you want to get your strength up so you get your more damage because your strength modifiers roll twice. So in act one, you want to be uh, be buying uh, Elixir of the Hill Giant, right? You get it from Auntie Ethel and Joey's Grove. So what you can do every time you do a long rest, she resets that inventory, she'll have three more, right? And if you don't go south of the Blight Village, she will be there. So as long as you don't leave Act 1 and don't go south of the Blight Village, she'll be there. So you can just, if you're playing on a lower difficulty, like Balanced or Explorer, you can just, you know, wait out the days and just farm that for a bit. But there's other ways you can also get on the underground, uh, under dark, and a few other ways you can get the giant strength uh, Alexis, but anti ethel is more efficient. Right. So once you hit level 4, you pop them and you'll be able to do a lot of damage. Right. So level 5, you get your extra attack. I'm not sure if you have it on armor mode. I'm not too sure about that. I apologize. Do let me know if you do. You get stunning strike with the melee or when unarmed. Level 5 is the huge boost uh, to your damage, just like level 4, because you'll be able to attack twice, have two chances of stun an enemy for one turn, which is massive, being able to pretty much cause a boss to not be able to attack or hard hitting enemy. Not to be able to attack is massive. You know? And if you get the Yankee, you get Mr. Steps. Now at level six, you get beautiful things. Another boost, because you get key and power strikes, which you get a manifestation of body, mind, and soul. So you can get necrotic damage, psychic damage, or radiant damage. It's three to six. It might not seem like huge, but when you're stacking lots of damage, that three damage or four damage, five or six extra damage can be really massive. And if you're attacking four times, that three damage becomes 12 damage, you know. You also get whole, uh, wholeness of body, you get healing, and you get some your key back. Right? So we're going to stop because we're going to respect, and then uh, we'll come back to... I would do this so as you can see my strength right now is 20 oh, 27 I did not mean to press it for some some reason it wants me to level up but my strength is 27 and you can see I'm hitting for 18 to 32 it's pretty good right so once you hit level 7 you want to respect and you want to change few things right because oh you'll be changing uh, some stuff, some of your perks, because if you're gonna go into armor, you'll change it slightly. So, since you respect, you're gonna get your first level into rogue, right? You're not going for, you're gonna something like this, right? You don't necessarily need wisdom if you're going for armor, you know? If you're gonna keep with the clothing, keep it at that, right? But, if you're not, if you're gonna go into light armor, medium armor, or if you get proficiency in heavy, you go with that. But if you're a party face, go with 17 dexterity, 15 constitution, and 14 charisma, right? Because you're gonna get an extra dexterity through onto Ethel, gets you to 18, so you have more initiative and more hit points, right? 
And with certain pieces of gear, even if they're armor, they'll still give you a full dexterity bonus, like the ones I have. Constitution will bump it up through Tavern Brawler, but if you get certain pieces of gear, you'll be able to respect and change it up. Intelligence and Wisdom just for uh, the saving throws. Charisma just to be able, you know, pass uh, checks, speech checks, and get influence trader prices. Because everything will be cost more on higher difficulty. Strength, we're going to bypass it because we're going to get it through elixirs. The skill proficiencies, again, that's up to you how you build them because it depends on what kind of playstyle you go with. <laughs> so you got one level in Tarot because you also get sneak attacks, you know. An armed sneak, oh, uh, not an armed, but you get ranged to sneak attack. But that doesn't matter. Because we not doing it for sneakiness. Now, at next level, you go back into Monk. And you're gonna go level, uh, level up into Monk. Pretty pretty heavy you're gonna pick the same things as before so we're just gonna quickly jump through this part <coughs> excuse me at level three make sure you pick away of the open hand don't forget that okay right. at level four don't forget to pick up a tavern brawler make sure you put the the point into constitution so you'll be able to get extra constitution saving throw and get a little bit more health. Level 5, same. You know, you don't get to pick much. Level 6, you get back into, you know, your manifestations to be able to do extra damage. That's why I do it at level 7. Now, level 8, right? You're going to go back into Rogue and get that. You get cunning action high, dash, and disengage. So you won't have to use your main action. You use bonus action, right? To either... Close the distance or disengage. Now level 9, you still stick with Rogue. And you pick... Not Arcane Trickster, not Assassin. You know, the Assassin does sound pretty good. But you're gonna go with Thief. Or Fast Hands. Because your bonus actions hit twice. You know how your main action does 18 to 32, for example? A bonus action will hit twice. So it'll be 36 to 64. You know, 18, 32, double it. That's why. To be able to attack twice that way. Doing massive damage. You can easily... Go and fully reach up to 200 plus damage, right? <coughs> so that's your six into monk, three into rogue. Now, here at level 10, it's up to you how you want to play it. You can go with an extra level into rogue, picking up an extra feat of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, getting uh, like ASI or ability score improvement and putting into charisma. Or you can go and put it into uh, alert, which gives you more initiative, which is what I like to do. Because there are some times where you get surprised, which sucks. And if you don't get surprised and you have high initiative, that's huge. But you can also go into level 7, getting a bit more evasion. Because I'll allow you to... Uh, if you fail the steady saving throw, you take half the damage. And if you succeed it, you take no damage. You know? You get stillness of mind, you cannot be charmed. Or frighten so it's pretty good because there's a lot of stuff that can charm and frighten you and that uh, sucks because this is a build that does a lot of damage right so level eight if you go with monk you get more health more key points and you get your feet i would recommend going with uh where's that sorry alert like i stated or you can go with the asi if you don't want to go into this route, like I said, you can go with six monk, four rogue, just for the feet, and then two uh, into fighter for the arcane search, so you can have more actions, you know? So you can have four different stunts. Again, that's up to you how you want to build it. But this way, you can go uh, into nine monk, because at nine monk, you get something pretty cool. You get key resonation punches and bonus action punches. What they do is you hit an enemy and they get resonate within them. And you can hit, say you have four enemies close to each other or with it, excuse me, the AOE, you punch one, you move to a different one, punch it with the ball, punch both resonating punches, and a third one with bonus one and a fourth one with another bonus one, right? Because they don't cost key points, mind you, right? Then you can activate Resonating Blast doing 3d6 force damage with the key point. So you can hit four enemies normally with that. Mind you, it's one punch. It's not multiple. 
ignore the damage, it will be different. Uh, and then they'll blow up doing damage to themselves and the enemies around them. And if they're within the circle of AoE, you know, 5 meters, they'll be able to just continuously chain them. So you can get rid of a lot of enemies that way. Also get, you know, an armored movement. So the difficult terrain doesn't slow you down and you can jump extra 6 meters if you're not wearing armor or shield. Get extra key points and get nice amount of HP. So, it's up to you. Remember, level 4, Tavern Brawler, get a bunch of elixirs. Right? Once you get into Act 3, get elixirs of the Cloud Giant Strength. For your early game gear, you definitely want a double awareness. So you give you plus 1 to initiative roll, so you can go faster. A decent one is also a hunting bow if you want to be able to attack monstrosities or have an advantage with them. But it's not necessary. I will def definitely recommend both awareness. Melee, you start with... Uh, you can buy the staff from Auntie Ethel, but if you reach level 4 fast, it's not really necessary. You also get... Definitely want Haste of Helm because you get momentum. And momentum gives you an extra 1.5 meters. So you can get 6 extra meters if you're not wearing armor. And if you're a wood elf, you know. A lot of distance. If you're armor, you definitely... You can go with the anti scale or another chess piece, which I forget. But um, for the most part, you're going to go with clothing for the early game. For your rings, crush ring is massive, giving you 3 extra meters of movement. So you can get literally double movement if you play Wood Elf and you wear no armor. For your gloves, early game gloves is huge of uh, gloves of Cinder and Sizzle. The reason is because they give you an extra 1 to 4 fire damage. And if you're level 6, that's extra damage, so you can get a lot of damage. For your boots, disintegrate a walker, so you cannot be in web, entangled, and snare, and cannot slip on grease or ice, so you can get to the enemies and do damage. It also gives you misty steps. For amulets, not um, it's up to you, but once you reach level uh, Act 2, get Surgeon, Subjugation Amulet, because it gives you uh, one scoring critical hit per long rest, you can paralyze the target for two turns. Pretty huge. For your other gloves at Act 2, you can go with Flood Helda's Gloves, which will give you necrotic damage. And they can make the enemy bleed, which can synergize with a few other builds that do damage depending if the enemy is bleeding. For boots, keep the same ones. For your bow, you can keep the Bow of Runners from Extra Initiative, or you can go with Dark Fire Short Bow for resistance to fire and cold. For your chest, you can go with Yanti Scamel, right? And that's why you will change off from Wisdom, because Wisdom will not give you extra armor, because you will have medium armor. And that's why you want to have higher dexterity, over 18 at least, because this will add full dexterity modifier to your armor. No, and it also gives you plus 1 to initiative. So you get, with a, with a bow of awareness, you get, and this armor, you get plus 2 to our initiative, and you will be able to do more armor. So, as you can see, since I have 20 dexterity, it's 22 armor. But in reality, it would be like 20-ish, which is pretty massive. For your helmet, I keep with momentum or uh, yeah, haste helmet. Gloves, we already talked about them. Rings, gotta go with a killer sweetheart. You know, when you kill a creature, your next attack roll will be a critical, and it can only happen once per long rest. But once you build your character right, you can do massive damage once you reach level nine. Right? Once you get to Act Three. You definitely want to get the dead shot because the number you need to roll a critical hit by attacking is reduced by one and it stacks. So instead of needing to roll a 20, you get 19, you're good. For amulet, you can keep with the surgeon one, but if you get into House of Hope, definitely get an amulet of greater health. That way, you can roll off the constitution and go into more charisma. Right? Because this will set your constitution to 23. You have advantage on constitution saving throws which will get you a massive 135 hit points, which is huge. You can go with different amulet if you want. I just chose this one because you know, I like to be tanky. For rings, crusher ring, killer sweetheart. Uh, then in the House of Hope, you definitely also want to get gloves of soul catching, where your unarmed attacks do 1 to 10 force damage, which is huge because not a lot of stuff are resistant to force damage, and it's a lot better than 1 to 4. It also gives you two of constitution, so if you want to wear the amulet, you can still have decent constitution. And once per turn, on an armor hit, you can gain up to 10 hit points. A chance you can forego it for gaining an attack 
will advantage and saving the roll advantage to your next turn. For boots, boots are persistent because they give you not only a dexterity saving throw, but they give you freedom of movement and long shatter. Freedom of movement pretty much makes it to where you cannot be, uh, your movement speed cannot be reduced because of difficult terrain, spells, magic effects, and you cannot be paralyzed or restrained because a lot of stuff can paralyze you, which will suck. And long shatter gives you an extra three movement. Right? So this will allow you to pretty much just almost fully bypass uh, stuns. For um, your chest, I definitely will go with the armor of agility because it is 17 armor and it's still medium and I'm proficient with it and it still adds my full dexterity modifier to my armor class. There's a few other armors you can go with but I chose this one and it gives you a saving throw plus two. For your cloak, you can go with cloak of protection because it gives me one more armor class and saving throw. I chose it but you can go with different ones. Especially if you go with a dark courage, that cloak is amazing. For helm, I chose the Helm of Baldurian because it heals me for actually two hit points, which is pretty nice. Not, not necessary, but it's pretty good. It also gives me plus one to armor class and saving throw, which gives me that huge armor. It also makes it to where I cannot be stunned. So I cannot be stunned, paralyzed, charmed, frightened, which pretty much nearly negates all of the CC on me, which is massive because this is my highest hitting build and it can stun enemies. And it also makes it to where enemies cannot land critical hits on me. So this guy is tanky and cannot be critted. Pretty massive. But I do lose some uh, bonuses because I'm wearing armor. Right? Um, also, like I said, once you get an Act 3, definitely get Cloud Giant Strength because you get to 27. You always, you only want to use the Elixir of Hill Giant until you reach level, or until you reach level 9. In Act 3, if you're in Act 2 and level 9, you might be able to see some Cloud Giant Strength and purchase them. All the time you want to have a lot of them right um but that's about it for this build i hope you enjoyed it if you did leave a like comment subscribe and if you don't like this dislike it but let me know but with that said i hope you see you in the next one and tomorrow have a good one bye bye